Hi everyone, welcome back. My name is Jennifer Martinez and I am a law clerk at the law office of Adala J. Ohiku. Today is not our typical OJO Q&A because today, in addition to Attorney Ohiku, we have special guest Kim Malone from Reality Check by Kim. Kim has over 20 years of experience working as a probation and parole agent and today she is joining Attorney Ohiku and I in our discussion on the topic of being arrested. Welcome, Kim. Thank you. So to start off, Kim, would you mind giving us a brief introduction of yourself and what you do? Sure. Um, I've been a probation and parole agent for over 20 years. Um, I have worked with different populations within the department from DV to sex offenders to comprehensive um, clients, which is anywhere from possession of marijuana to retail theft. Um, I see more and more young people coming on supervision now, and I think that um, we need to start talking to young people before they get on supervision. So I started Reality Check by Kim, so I can do that. Um, I go into schools and talk with athletic teams about the law and just different everyday subjects um, to help them make better decisions. So I think I've given them a reality check, so that's why I called it Reality Check by Kim. Thanks, Kim. Our topic for today is being arrested. So, Attorney Ohiku, what kinds of things does a criminal background check search for or show? Uh, first of all, good morning and welcome, Kim. Thanks for uh, joining us today. Uh, a criminal background check, it basically shows everything. So, if a person was arrested and let's say uh, nothing happened, they weren't charged with a case, they weren't issued any type of citation, they never had to go to court. Even that will still show up if a, a background, criminal background check was run on that person. And a lot of times people think, well, you know, when I was, uh, I don't know, 19, when I was in college, you know, I got some uh, ticket, I was arrested, but nothing really happened. Sometimes people think that doesn't show up, but the truth is it does show up. So this thing called CCAP, Attorney Ohiku, can you talk about what it is, who has access to it, what it does? A very good question. So CCAP is, uh, is short for Consolidated Court Automation Program, and it's really supposed to be a benefit to the public so that the public has access to, to people's, I don't know, cases or records. So it's supposed to be like a public benefit. But what it is, is it's an online search engine or, or database where you can put in someone's name into the, the box, and then it'll pull up any type of cases that, that are associated with that person. Now, with common names, you know, let's say Paul Brown, for an example, or common name, uh, sometimes you gotta be careful with the dates of birth because you might have, you know, five, six people that'll uh, show up. And sometimes people get confused. Oh, I searched you and I found this, but sometimes it's not the actual person because you gotta be careful with dates of birth. Thank you, Attorney Hiku. Kim, if I've been arrested before, will it always show up on my record? Yes, it'll always show up on your record. It doesn't matter if you were arrested at 13, at 20, at 30. If somebody runs a background check on you and you're 40 or 50, what happened when you were 13 is still going to show up. So say during a protest um, for, or for violating the city's curfew, I was arrested. That will show up on my record? Yes, it will. It'll show up. Um, what it'll do is say the date, the time, the place you were arrested and what you were arrested for. And then it will eventually say what the outcome was of it. So if it was dismissed because maybe you just got caught up in a group um, within the protest itself and everybody was arrested, then it could, would say dismissed if there was no charges or it would state you got fined or whatnot. So yes, it, it will show up on there. So sometimes we got to explain to people that your behavior will always follow you because that paper trail will always be there. And, and Kim, something just came to mind. A as an agent, do you think in Wisconsin that there are too many people on supervision? Yes. I think that there are too many and I think that the way um, I, I can see a varying in people that Two people could have been sentenced or charged with the same offense and one can be a little harsher than uh, the other in what their conditions and sentences are. 
Kim, that kind of goes into our next question of what happens if I get arrested, but my case gets dismissed. So can you talk a little bit more about what happens if you're arrested for a felony, but it gets pleaded down to a misdemeanor or even it gets dismissed? What kinds of things, what would show up on my background check? Very good question. And a lot of people do not understand this either. So if you get arrested for something that is a felony offense, when you look on CCAP, it'll show the case number with a CF. A CF means that it's a felon. Um, a CM means that it's a misdemeanor. But what some people get confused about is that uh, you could be initially charged with a felony to have a CF case, but it gets pled down to a misdemeanor. So it's very important on CCAP for an employer or whoever's doing the background check to look if the charge still remained a felon because sometimes they get dismissed and pled down. And that's true. If I could just jump in, that's true. I get a lot of, a lot of times my clients tell me that, you know, an employer, that a, a, a job interview was going well, and then the, the, and it sounded like they were going to get, you know, get the position. And then later on, after a background check, the employer didn't give them a job because they found a case and they thought the person had a like a felony on their record. And the truth of the matter is they did not have a felony on their record. They, oftentimes they have misdemeanors. So a lot of times my clients will contact me and say, hey, can you help me straighten this out? Or how should I handle this? So that's very common. Yes, and, and I have the same thing too. I'll have clients that'll come in and say, or call me and say, the employer is saying I have a felony and it's this. Can you give me anything that will prove that it's a misdemeanor because they're looking to get in a, a job and they're being denied the job for that reason? Yeah, sometimes I tell people to go down to the courthouse and get something that's called a judgment of conviction. And the, the clerk will charge you, I don't know, 25, 50 cents per page. A little ridiculous in my opinion, but the judgment of conviction will actually show the ending result of, you know, what the person, how the case was resolved. So mm -hmm. if it was a felony, but then it got resolved as a misdemeanor, the judgment of conviction will be tangible proof that it was a misdemeanor. Mm -hmm. So going off of that, Attorney Hiku, does an arrest or a conviction ever truly go away? Can something I was arrested for 20 years ago come back and haunt me today? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's always going to show up, just like Kim said, it, it always shows up. And sometimes people get, uh, they get expungement uh, can, confused, okay? So sometimes they think, well, you know, I did have a case, but the judge said if I do everything I'm supposed to do, I can come back and get my case expunged. And sometimes, you know, they'll go ahead and do that. And then they, later on, they their job interview, okay, or they're applying for some type of position, and then the, the case pops up, okay? Mm -hmm. So the person's confused saying, well, I thought this was expunged. Expungement, and, and the issue is expungement only refers to the court record. So let's say there are five different agencies or ent entities that have information about a case. The only thing that expungement is gonna take care of is the, the court case record, that's it. So if an agent has a record on it, expungement does not get rid of that. If the district attorney's office has a, a record on a case, expungement does not get rid of that. Expungement only addresses the court, the circuit court record. That's it. Thank you, right. and thank you, Kim. This concludes our OJO Q&A with special guest Kim Malone. Stay tuned for next week where Kim will be joining us again. Thanks for watching. Thank you.